Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, today I'm going to talk about some work we did on a CDS checker, a tool for checking concurrent data structures with uh, for working using C and C++ components. This is uh, work done with uh, my grad students, uh, Brian Morris and uh, Katie Mountain. Okay, so to effectively scale programs to multi-core, multiple cores, many programmers make use of concurrent data structures built using atomic operations. This can be done to provide non-blocking guarantees or to generate less, less uh, cache contention. Performance benefits in some cases can be significant. Unfortunately, this strategy yields data structure implementations that can be very difficult to debug and test. Data race detectives are typically not helpful for these types of data structures, and this is because these data structures make use of what are effectively intentional races using atomic operations instead of normal memory accesses. And thus, their correctness often depends on the exact ordering of operations. So I'll start by talking about the simplest and most intuitive model for how multi-threaded programs behave, which is a sequential consistency memory model. In this memory model, programs behave as if the threads are simply interleaved. For example, in this figure, we have a program with two variables, x and y. They're both initially zero. And we have two threads. Thread one does an assignment to x first, and then reads to y. Thread two does an assignment to y first, and then reads from x. And under the sequentially consistent memory model, there are three possible outcomes of this program. The first is in which thread one runs first. In which case, um, you find that R1 is zero. Uh, it reads zero for Y because the assignment for Y is not done. And R2 is one. The other possible outcome is thread two runs first. In which case, you find R1 is one and R2 is zero. And the third possible outcome is they both take a step, do their assignments, and do their respective store uh, loads afterwards. In which case, you find R1 and R2 are both one. Now, Note that we cannot see an execution in which this program uh, terminates with R1 and R2 both equal to zero. And the reason is that the first operation executed has to be one of the assignments. So we have to see it. And unfortunately, mainstream computer architectures do not implement SC. Instead, at best, you have something called total store order, or TSO, for x86. And this is as good as it gets. And uh, other processors like ARM or PowerPC have even more what are uh, called relaxed memory models. We'll get a little into this a little bit more in detail shortly. Uh, moreover, compiler transformations also break SC because they reorder memory operations. And to support writing low level concurrent code, what's happened is language designers have incorporated relaxed memory models into the languages. Both Java and C, C++, JavaScript, lots of different languages have this. And this talk is going to focus on the C and C++ memory model, which was first uh, developed in 2011. Okay, so I'm about to hear a really quick overview of the C memory model. The memory model defines a set of atomic operations. And these are things like loads from memory, stores to memory, and what are called read, modify, write operations. That in a single instant, read from memory, do some computation, and do a write. And these are basically, you can think of as a, are like instructions that the processor provides. And each of these atomic operations can declare memory ordering parameters that allow the developer to trade higher overheads in exchange for getting stronger guarantees. And these memory orders are listed in this box below, ranging from the cheapest to the strongest guarantees. And the behavior of atomic operations in memory models is specified in terms of several ordering relations. These are the happens before relation, which captures release acquire synchronization, basically what happens when you unlock and someone grabs a lock. There's modification order, which captures essentially what we call a cache coherence. And there's a sequential consistent relationship, which totally orders operations that declare the strongest memory model sequential consistency. And we also need the reads from relation. <coughs> And the reason is that there's really no notion of the last written value in the C memory model. And so a weekly ordered load can read from many, one of many different stores in a particular execution, 
And so this read from relation basically tells you what's stored that that load read from. And we're just talking about a concrete execution, not all the possible executions. So just to illustrate this with an example, here we have an array A with n elements. We have two threads. Thread one goes through and stores one to every element in increasing order. And we assume that all the elements are initially zero. And then thread two goes and reads them in opposite order. And you might initially think, hey, you know, as soon as I read a one in thread two, the rest of the things have to be one. That's not true in relaxed memory models. And the C and C plus memory model allow you to read any combination of zeros and ones out of this. And so if programmers actually want to use this to build useful data structures, they have to somehow constrain this. And they do this by using the stronger memory orders. And so to illustrate this, we have the following example. Here we have declared that the store, the x, has a special little parameter called release. And the corresponding load from x has a special little parameter called acquire. What this does is establishes synchronization, kind of like locks do. OK? And so this establishes a happy people relation that says anything that occurred before here has to happen before anything that occurs after here. And effectively, what this guarantees for this little program is that this load right here had better see the value from the store, so it better return for you. OK. And the C and C++ memory model also provides cache coherence for single memory locations via what's called the modification order. And to kind of illustrate this, consider this uh, simple program where we have one thread where we store 1 to x, and then we store 2. The C and C++ memory model do not allow, didn't allow the other thread to read the value 2 first and then the what value 1. Basically, cache coherence from inside. OK. So as probably everyone knows here, concurrent programming or multi-threaded programming is well known to be difficult. Okay? And unfortunately, coding for a relaxed memory model just makes this already difficult problem a whole bunch more difficult. And unfortunately, even experts typically get this wrong. So what we believe is that we need tool support to help people exhaustively test their concurrent code that's written for these relaxed memory models. Because we think it's just too hard to get right without it. And so what we're working on is a stateless model checking. So the idea of stateless model checking is we're going to exhaustively enumerate the uh, space concurrent executions that are allowed. And you can think of this uh, as sort of a set of executions like a tree. And what we do is we work our way across this tree using backtracking based search to execute all the schedules. And it's called stateless because we don't have to remember everything we've done before. We just have to remember where in this tree we are. And so basically we're moving from left to right through this tree. Okay? And it's of course limited to short execution because this tree essentially has this exponential complexity, this exponential explosion. There are techniques called the dynamic partial order reduction that can scale stateless model checking to slightly larger executions. And it's well studied for the sequential consistency memory model that nothing real implements. Okay. So we had a few design goals that shaped our work. First, we want to minimize compiler dependencies. We'd like developers just to grab our tool without having to use some research compiler or plugin. Second, we'd like to support linking against existing libraries and not force programmers to recompile their libraries just to test the code. And finally, we'd like to support, as our goal, unit testing of data structures. And the reason why we want to do unit testing of data structures is we think this is kind of a sweet spot. These are big enough execution to be useful for finding bugs, but they're small enough that this sort of technology will actually scale to test these uh, data structures. So our work on model checking C and C++ has sort of two primary contributions. First is the development of a constraint-based approach to modeling the modification order that uh, drastically reduces the amount of work we have to do and exploring redundant executions. And the second is addressing a very odd challenge on model checking the C and C++ memory model, which is that loads can read from stores that happen later in the execution. So a load can actually read from the future. Very weird. Um, and this presents a huge challenge for model checking, because we see the load 
before we have any idea what value it's supposed to return. We haven't seen the store yet. So the second contribution is the development of this future values mechanism for modeling this relaxed behavior. You might be going, how in the world can a load read from a future store? What's happening is the compiler is reordering the loads of stores, or the processor is doing the reordering. And so that's, you know, it's not like it's really reading from the future, it's just, uh, you know, getting reordered. Okay. So let's begin by looking at how we model the easy case. Loads that read from the past. Um, so each load, the CDF checker tool creates a may read from set, basically a set of stores that we've seen so far that this load read from. So this set contains all the stores the load we read from. So in this case, this load here may read from zero, the initial value, one, the store here, two, the store here, or three, the store there. And the may read set from, uh, may read from set for uh, the load from Y may read from zero, the initial value, 10, the store here, 11, the store value store here, and 12, the value store there. Okay. And since these two loads read from different variables, under the C memory model, any combination of these two values is a legal execution. Okay, so let's take a look at the case where we load from a variable more than once. Recall that I said there's this thing called modification order that uh, basically uh, constrains the behavior of loads and roughly it is equivalent to cash returns. And it forbids executions in which you know uh, you read uh, stores from a single variable in an order that's inconsistent with the order that they are stored. So for example, you can't read, um, you can't read two and then one. Okay. And essentially what modification order does is it enforces coherence. And if we have two stores in which one happens before the other, the first store must be modification order before the second. And we have a similar rule for loads. If one load happens before the second load, and the first load reads from one store, and the second load reads from the second store, the first store must be modification ordered before the second store. Okay, and those similar rules that capture read write and uh, write read coherence that I have omitted. Okay, so one question is well, how do we handle this modification? <coughs> And one way to do it is to simply enumerate all the possible words. But the problem is that here we have a very, very simple program that has two stores, an initial value, and you might count and go, there are six different words for two different stores. And so if we looked at this in a context called slightly larger context of this tiny program here with the total of two stores and two loads, we would have to explore six different modification orders times possible three different uh, reads from here, three different reads from here, so we have 54 combinations of behaviors for this simple, tiny little program, okay? So there are a few insights that can get us out of this problem. First is that modification order is not something that's directly observable. You just observe its effects on the values that loads return. Um, and that modification order and reads from are interdependent. And model checking only requires that there exists some consistent memory order for modification order. No one cares what the modification order is. So instead of trying to explicitly enumerate modification orders, what we do is we keep track of constraints on the modification order and simply ask the question, does there exist some modification order that's consistent with these constraints? And we don't know, worry about exactly what this modification order is. And so let's take a look at how this works in the example. So here's the example we saw before. We have uh, nodes on the bottom that represent the stores in the modification order graph. So we have the initial value, the store of one, the store of two. And um, suppose we first execute the store of one to x. So that gives us a modification order edge from uh, x equals zero to x equals one. Saying this one's the order before this. And suppose when we next execute the store of two, then we'll get a modification order edge from here to here. Now, let's suppose we execute the first load next. Okay, so there are three possible values you can read from. And let's suppose we just happen to read the value two. Okay, then we get to this last 
load. And there are three possible values in its may reach from set. Now, if we were to read the value zero, then when we would get a modification of order edge from here to here, we have a cycle in this graph, and it's inconsistent with any possible modification order. So we can't read from zero. Same problem with one, and as a result, we can only read from the value two. So now I'd like to talk about one issue involving the order a model checker evaluates statements and synchronization. Recall that in C and C++, that acquire or lease pairs create synchronization. And the example, if the load reads from the initial store, the F statement is not executed. So if this load reads from here, we don't execute the F statement. On the other hand, if it reads from the store in the other thread, we will read the value one and execute the if statement. And since we're reading from a store lease, these things synchronize. And so imagine we had some data variable that was protected by these uh, topics. So the thread and the, the read in thread one is now guaranteed to read the value 17. Okay. Now the C memory model does not define a total execution order, but the model checker actually has to evaluate the statements in some order. So suppose that we choose the order shown by the red dashed line in the uh, picture. This makes things challenging as we have to instrument accesses to all the normal variables to ensure that we return the right value. Now if we vary these, access, uh, these uh, data accesses in some library code, we'd also have to instrument the library. So this is making a lot of work for us to do. So we want to avoid processing statements and orders that create such problems. And note that the happened before relation is a secret by the standard. And so, as a result, we can generally force the execution order to be consistent with happens before. And the nice thing here is that you don't have to instrument libraries or normal memory accesses, so the tool becomes easy to use. And um, so, I'd like to talk about how we simulate loads to read from later stores. And just consider the execution shown here, where R1 and R2 are 1, so both loads are reading from the later store, the other thread. And no matter how we order this execution, there's going to be a load that's going to have to read from a store that appears later. Delayed thread 2 or delayed thread 1, but the first load is always going to have to read from some store that's later. And so what we do is, we first execute the load. We have no idea that it might have to read from the value 1, so we just make it read from the value 0. We get the second load, and we see, OK, there's two possible values it can read from, 0 or 1. So we have it read from one in this particular case. And finally, we see the store at the end. Well, we notice, oh, there's a value one that this low way back here could have read from. So we use backtracking based search and remember this. Then we start over. And on the next execution, we go, oh, you know, last time we saw a store of one later. So I'm going to remember this. And in fact, this time I'm going to make it read from one even though I haven't seen a store yet. And we create this little promise note to say, hey, we need to find a store someplace in this execution to justify the fact that we read one. And we keep on going until we finally do find a store of the value of one to y. And then that will uh, essentially justify this speculation we made, this promise note. And now we have an execution that resolves the promise. And we have a consistent execution, and we're able to simulate this weird behavior that we have in a real machine. Okay, so skip past and go. So we have some experimental results. We have comparisons to some previous tools. And then we have um, some uh, use of our tool on some real benchmarks. So um, <coughs> there's essentially two tools that came out before CDS Checker. And they had in their paper uh, some very simple uh, test cases. We can see the execution time world quite a bit faster than the other two tools. Um, there's also some third party papers that have, were published after CDS Checker that published comparisons to CDS Checker. And uh, they're slower. It means that's their result, not mine. And then we also evaluated CDS Checker on several data structure unit test. We were able to ex uh, test them all in less than 11 seconds. And we found uh, bugs in two of them. 
a known bug in a single producer, single consumer queue. And we found a new bug in a chase left deck. And the contribution of the paper that published the chase left deck was a port of this data structure to the ARM memory model and the C and C++ memory model. And the authors included some of the world's experts on the C and C++ memory model. And they concluded a correctness proof for ARM and a hand wavy argument of why it applied to C. And it was wrong. And we found a bug there. And there are a whole bunch more details in the paper. And I'd encourage you to uh, read it, especially if you find that you need to build very efficient current data structures. It's a very nice tool to help you find bugs. And there are a number of tools that build on top of CDF Checker, both from our group and uh, other groups. And it seems that I'm out of time. So I'll open to any questions you guys may have.